Hi YouTube and happy Friday morning here in Southwest Ohio and happy whatever time it is for all of you viewers in other time zones. What is it that I have shown before you all here today? Well, this grayish brown hunk of plastic is a Sharp PCG815 Pokecom that I recently imported from Japan. I got this on the buy.jp auction site, that's Yahoo Japan Auctions, for about $30 or $40 combined price and shipping and handling from Japan. It was incredibly quick shipping. Very, very quick. It was probably a week to get from Tokyo over to uh, Cincinnati. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open this. It has a nice plastic cover. This was amongst the last of Sharp's pocket computers, and it was used in Japanese schools for teaching CE and assembly and so on. Probably the more famous pocket computers were the PC-1500 of the early 80s and other versions that Radio Shack, Tandy Radio Shack, would sell, which could be programmed in BASIC or LH5801 machine code. There are a number of other versions in different form factors, like the very small PC-1250, the PC-1211, which is not machine code programmable, and then others with multi-line displays. By the 80s and 90s, I don't believe these were sold as commonly in the United States, but they were still sold in Japan, as these, again, were used in Japanese schools to teach C and assembly code. I don't have all the technical details about this. Honestly, I haven't found a manual. I think I can just find some for the G830 and the G850, which were the last models and sold up until 2002 or 2004 or so. But I can say that the G815, let's zoom in there, the G815, was the G830 prior to 1996. So it's pretty close to a model that I think is familiar to a lot of people. I think the PCG850 though is, is the most famous. These were surprisingly versatile. They had Z80 processors, 32K of RAM for the most part. I believe the exceptions, the E650 and some others that were sold in in Europe in addition to Japan that had 64K of RAM. So anyway, 32K of RAM, which is quite a lot considering some of the early, earlier sharp pocket computers like my EL5500 III has a measly 8K of RAM. I'm going to be featuring that in a future video. It's a very, very cute little pocket computer and incredibly robust. Yeah, so it has a Z80 probably running at 3 or 4 megahertz. You can program in Z80 assembly in CASL, which is a Japanese assembly teaching standard, or in BASIC. In addition, I don't believe this could program PIC micro microcontrollers, but the G850 also can do that. It has the familiar 11-pin interface on the left, and then this system bus that can be broken out. Let's see how that comes out. Oh yeah, you pry it there. Little card edge connector on that side. This might have been for programming picks, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that was used. Uh, you have the contrast wheel for the LCD. That's important for this unit. Uh, it's really easy to take apart. I will note that in addition to two screws here, there's two more inside the uh, battery battery chamber. It runs on four AA batteries. The one I got, this one, had a lot of corrosion. It looked like it still had the original sharp batteries, so I took those out and I lightly sanded off the corrosion. But that did unfortunately seem to affect the LCD a bit, as we'll see in a moment. Anyway, so you can get this open. You just have to unscrew four small screws, two here and then two inside, that are both exposed. Uh, 
trust me. And then you can open it up by unsnapping the uh, two halves and do whatever you want to do on the inside, clean it up and so on. I bring that up because this works, but you'll notice that there's some kind of, of flickering on the top left hand side. I mean, you can still read it, but it's not, not optimal. Let's adjust that contrast. Yeah, you can see, see it. Uh, it, oh, it also works as a calculator. That's another thing. It works as a general purpose scientific calculator. I could do something like 56 times 8 and say that's 448. Jeez, I might need to get a little bit forward here. And lean, lean over. Okay, yeah, so it's works as a calculator. I can go through different modes on the left side. Yeah, so there's calculator functions on the right, some useful useful shortcuts here. If you press shift and add a certain key, you can get those. Um, CLS for clearing. I believe as far as interfacing this, there there is a cassette interface in SIO mode. I think the C126P printer and cassette interface works, but I have read in some very interesting web pages online that you can implement three or five wire TTL serial just with an FD, FTDI USB TTL serial uh, breakout cable. That's really great. You could potentially just plug in wires appropriately into the female header in order to get a serial connection. Anyway, so let's go through some of the available software. You have a text editor there. I know you can edit and then you know look at a simple file system. I imagine this is for writing basic or C or assembly code that then you compile and, and execute. The C is interpreted, I should mention. It's it's not a C compiler, it's interpreting C as, as basic. Uh, you have edit and print. So you can press the first letter for some of these commands. Uh, CMT, that's that's cassette. You know, you know, maybe I'll just hold this up so you can see the screen a bit better. Yes, yeah, so there's CMT. I'll go back to text. Uh, file, program file there. Yeah, you should be able to see it better. I think that's a common common issue on the 815, that flickering display. I did notice a little bit of corrosion got to the top of the display. Hopefully that's not, not what the issue was. Anyway, so there's you can edit text files, uh, run programs in basic. There's run mode or program mode, depending on whether you want to enter a program or run it. I entered in a Hello World program. If I go to program mode, I can do shift list. And you can see why we just saw hello world. Anyway, so you have a nice basic interpreter. And I imagine the commands on the G850 for the most part work on this. Uh, OK, so you have an assembler. Assembler. You can pretty obviously see it's a 32K machine here. Yeah, so you can assemble programs. Uh, let's display, yeah, so that's not going to work. Go back to assembler, assembler, ASM. OK, anyway, so and then the other option is CASL, which is a Japanese standard monitor. You can look through your registers. I guess for tracing and debugging. And in addition to that, you have a C compiler. Or <laughs> I made a mistake, a C interpreter. I made a mistake that I just fixed a few moments ago. It's an 
it says it's a compiler, but it's it's actually interpreted C, not compiled C. Anyway, so a nice Z80 powered pocket computer. I am happy to share this video with all of you on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I also want to mention that I'm trading this for an HP 15C with a friend of mine in Denmark. So I hope Johnny Rasmussen very much enjoys this machine and codes lots of fun C programs. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'm also going to be reviewing a PC G830 sometime in the future. If you have any experiences with these machines, please write them in the comments down below. And like and subscribe as always. Take care and have a great weekend.